Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and today I'm honored to be with the GDB Watchpoint team to talk to you about one of my favorite topics, debugging. But as we get to know each other, or if you're not familiar with me, I want to go ahead and just ask you a very serious question. Have you ever wanted a time travel? Well, <laughs> the answer to that is I don't know if I'm able to help you in the real world to time travel. But with that said, there is some good news with one of my favorite topics of debugging that I can help you with. And that's to talk to you today about this idea of time travel debugging. And the idea with time travel debugging is we can record and replay our execution, whether we want to do that forward in time or using time travel, go backward in time and replay execution of our programs to either better understand them or to find pesky bugs. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at a few different debugging tools that are going to help us and actually do an example so that you can do some time traveling today, or at least that's what you can tell your friends. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So the first tool, of course, is GDB that maybe some of you folks are familiar with. And GDB is a great debugger with many features, and it includes this feature of record and replay debugging, which is wonderful. But what I want to go ahead and do is introduce you to a tool that has a lightweight recording for time travel debugging. And this tool is known as RR for record and replay. And it's primarily a C and C++ tool for debugging on Linux. Well, you know, and it's to enhance GDB as noted here. And again, this allows you to, with fairly little overhead, actually record and replay your execution. So I think what's best to do at this point is go ahead and do a little example, and then we can go ahead and talk a little bit more about exactly how this works. All right, so what I've got here set up is I'm going to go ahead and just open up a file here called replay.cpp. I'll go ahead and make this a little bit bigger for a moment if you want to go ahead and study the program. But I think most of you watching this might be familiar with a basic program here. I'm going to go ahead and just create a variable uninitialized here. And I'm going to go ahead and enter a value for it and repeat that value to the user. And then we'll go ahead and generate a random number and print that out. So pretty simple stuff here. But again, you can kind of pull this and say, what if I had a much larger program where we're doing lots of data input or pooling in lots of information and outputting that information to the user? And what happens if there's a bug there? Well, first, let's just go ahead and understand record and replay debugging. So if you're on a Linux system, you can go ahead and do sudo apt git install rr, which will install the record and replay debugger, the lightweight debugger for a Linux system. And assuming you've done that successfully, let's go ahead and install it which I've already got here. And let's go ahead and try out this program. Now, first, as always, we should probably just go ahead and compile this program. So I'm going to go ahead and make my window a little bit smaller here. And with debugging symbols, first and foremost, a modern version of whatever language you're using, say C++20. And as always, good practice to enable warnings. And then finally, compile our program. And I'm just going to name this program PROG, short for program here. All right, so our program, let's go ahead and run it and our value 100, and we get a random number that is generated here, 37. Okay, now again, why could this very simple program be interesting to us? Well, it's sort of as designed non-deterministic, meaning we don't know what value the user is actually gonna put in here, 100, and we don't know what the random number in general is if we've got a good random seed going to be generated. So what if we wanted to showcase some behavior to a user and say, hey, this caused my program to crash. For instance, let's go ahead and rerun this program. Let's go ahead and put in some crazy value here with a bunch of symbols. And well, we get this number 230 and your user is telling you, hey, I never entered 230. And we have all this other additional input here. OK, so we want to be able to capture this and see what might be the problem. So let's go ahead and use RR to do this. So what we're going to go ahead and do is type in RR and record, and then the executable that we want to record. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter in a moment and show you what happens. And on my particular system, you're just going to see, hmm, abort, core, and a bunch of error messages. OK, so let's actually go through these and make sure we understand how to get set up since we're just starting with RR today. So first thing that you're going to need to know is that we're probably going to need some permissions to execute and actually record this information. So what this tool is going to be doing is recording somewhere in memory in some directory, and I'll actually show you that, what actually happened during execution. And you can sort of imagine this if I go ahead and take you to the whiteboard as every step of execution in our program here. So for instance, when we enter our main or even before main, 
has to be recorded in some sort of log somewhere. And you can go ahead and read the RR paper on their website if you want to go ahead and understand a little bit more about the details. But you can imagine that we're essentially just capturing all the state here. So for our variable x, what are the different state changes that might happen? This C input line, for instance, where we're taking in the value might be also particularly interesting because we're writing a new value of x, say 42, and so on, and so on as we execute. So some way this tool here, RR, is recording the execution of things like which functions were called and in what order, where reads and writes happen in memory, and able to record that in an efficient way in a log for us as our program's actually running. So we'll get a normal execution and maybe just a tiny bit slower because we've got this overhead of executing our program, but with the benefit that we can replay this. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see how we can do this. Okay, now let's go ahead and try take two here for running this program. I'll go ahead and hit enter and maybe you'll still see these sort of fatal messages and that's okay. We just need to read the here and say RR needs uh, some event here. So depending on your system configuration, you may or may not get this error here. And it just says, hey, run with the dash N option. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record dash N and then my program should run at this point. Now, if I have any arguments, I can go ahead and add those to the end here, and that would be totally fine uh, for us. But let's go ahead and hit enter here. And now you're going to see in this first message that our program is actually being recorded here. And that's being saved to this log here, where we can see that our program is being recorded. Okay, so let's go ahead and follow along. Let's enter a value for our value x. I'm going to put in something that we'll remember. How about 144 here? I'll hit enter. And then we get our random number of three here. Okay, now can you remember those two things? Well, let's go ahead and just kind of leave it here at the bottom of our screen, and we can go ahead and see what those are. Now go ahead and get rid of our source code here. Hopefully you've got the idea here. And let's go ahead and replay this execution here. So I'm gonna use RR replay, and that'll replay the last execution that I did. Now, if we wanna go ahead and look at a specific one, I'll go ahead and show you that in a moment. But again, let's go ahead and try this, enter. And it's saying, hmm, not readable. Okay, so let's try the other trick that we learned before. We probably need permissions to execute this particular directory and some of the uh, information. So I'm gonna run it as sudo. I'll hit enter, type in my super secret password. And now all of a sudden we're in GDB here. So let's go ahead and just type out layout source. I think this will be useful for you uh, to actually see the source here. And I'll just go ahead and type run. So just normal GDB commands like we've learned before are available. But notice that we are in RR here on our cursor to let us know that we're in the replay and record debugger. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit uh, run to start running our program. C for continue. And then you're actually gonna see some output here in our display here. Now it's a little bit ill formatted because it's running within this debugger, but look, enter a value x and x is 144. Okay, that looks like that matches exactly what we had here. And then we have a random number that was generated three and that's exactly what we have here. So through our record and replay, we're actually able to see exactly what happened. And that's really cool. This is valuable to somebody who's debugging uh, some error that might have occurred. But now you're saying, Mike, what about the time travel part? <laughs> How do we actually go back here? Okay, let's go ahead and try this again. And I'll go ahead and hit enter once, control L to clear my screen. And let's set a breakpoint somewhere, maybe somewhere particularly interesting in the program here. I'm going to go ahead and put it at line uh, 19. And we'll go ahead and see that associated breakpoint here. And let's go ahead and try to run our program again. So we usually do this with run here and uh, continue. I'll hit control L to clean up our screen a little bit. And you can see we're at our breakpoint. Okay. So how do we go backwards? Well, if you've done some of this in GDB, again, it'll be familiar. Just go ahead and type out reverse and then hit enter and you'll get a little bit of help here. I'll pop out of the screen so you can see all the different options here, but you can see that we can reverse continue, which will take us to our previous breakpoint if we have any. Reverse finish, if we're in a function, we'll go backwards, reverse next, reverse next uh, I for instruction, and we can search and step and so on and so on and so on. So we've got some really powerful options we can do here. So let's just go ahead and try reverse next here, enter, and voila, like that, we can go ahead backwards in our execution.
So if we reach some sort of segmentation fault or other problem, we can go back. So just like GDB, if you have experience with that, or if you're just learning for the first time, I can hit enter and repeat these instructions here. And just like that, you can see that we're going backwards here. So back again, back again, back again, and enter and enter and enter all the way back up to our main here. And now I can just run our regular command uh, next here. And now we're going forward. So that's all there is to it. And we're getting our output again. X is 144. No prompt for me or anything. That's just what's been recorded in our time travel debugger. Control L to clear things out and just continue to keep running here and continue to run past our breakpoint and see our random number that's generated. All right, so let me go ahead and quit our R for a moment here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and um, rerun uh, RR. So sudo RR record dash N and then our program, because I want to go ahead and just show you that this directory is where our recordings are. OK, so let's just go ahead and copy that for a moment. Uh, I'll go ahead and just hit enter uh, 14 or something. And let's just go ahead and do LS here. And again, tab. It's probably going to give me a read permission uh, issue here. So I need to do uh, sudo here, enter, and then we can actually see uh, our latest uh, program trace. That was the last one that happened. And then all of our other recordings. Now through RR, we can set some of these recordings if we want for different programs. They're usually labeled with uh, on my system, the executable name and the next execution. Sometimes there'll be a timestamp or other things. All right, so there we have it. So that's the RR debugger, the ability to record and replay executions of your actual program. And now you can share those executions with your colleagues or rerun them yourselves to try to understand, experiment what's going on. And the real value here is the ability to, again, time travel and be able to step forward or backwards into your code to help you understand what's going on and ultimately save you time in the debugging process. Now, your next steps are going to be to check out the RR web page for more information to learn about some of the different features and limitations of this tool. I've also found that the GitHub page is really useful with just telling you different little things and different flags that you can pass into RR. And of course, another resource where you can learn more about debugging is from GDB Watchpoint. So make sure to visit the Undo website here, check out some of the other tutorials, and subscribe to the actual newsletter so you can get more great tips like this. And thank you for spending some of your time with me learning about record and replay debuggers to do time travel debugging.